Hey folks, Aaron here from Aaron's Practical Reviews, and these are 10 tips for anybody who's going to Vegas for the first time or who hasn't been in a long time, or for anybody who just wants to sit back and watch a video about Vegas, because you love Vegas as much as we do. So here's 10 quick tips to help you enjoy your stay in Vegas. Number one is try to arrive early if possible. In other words, book your flight for earlier in the day and try to get to the hotel as early as possible. Now, check-in is typically three. If you can get early check-in, sometimes you have to pay more, it's 11. But if you get there too late in the day, as we've done in the past, then you may get stuck with whatever room's available. So you might not get a king size bed, you might get a horrible view. So it's definitely worth your time to try to get there as early as possible. And I know, I know, when you're in Vegas, you're not gonna be in the hotel most of the time, you're gonna be out doing things. But when you are in your hotel room, you want the setup that you're used to or that makes you comfortable. So if you get there early, you have a much better chance of getting it. And if you get there late, Odds are, if it's busy, you're gonna get stuck with something you're not particularly fond of. So simple solution, just try to get there as early as possible. So tip number two is gonna be avoid the shuttle slash rideshare services that you can get when you're booking your package. So in other words, like on southwest.com or Expedia or whatever, when they offer that shuttle service for an extra 70 or 80 bucks or whatever it is, avoid that and take a cab or find another solution where it's only you and your, you know, only your party getting the ride. And the reason I say that is because on these services, typically you, get in with a group of people that are going to multiple hotels and from the airport to your hotel, maybe an hour and a half trip because they're stopping at every hotel along the way. And you may be last on that list, you don't know. And then on departure, they may be picking you up three or four hours earlier than your flight. So in other words, you might they might pick you up at seven o'clock in the morning for an 11 o'clock flight and you're just sitting in the airport for three or four hours. So it's just been our experience that these shuttles can be unpredictable and you have very little control. So you're kind of better off just taking control of yourself and calling your own taxi or setting up your own ride. So individually, so you don't have to go as a group and follow their rules that's all just helps you utilize the time a little better and this kind of plays into tip number three and that is go as soon as you get there and get situated try to get out and get some food water and stuff to bring back to your hotel room you're gonna find stores all over the place you can get uh, you know cases of water stuff that you can still carry up to your hotel room get some snacks get something to drink you're gonna want that in your hotel room one of the things you're gonna find in Vegas is that it's it as big as it is and as much as there is to do and to eat and everything it's not really set up to be really convenient to grab food and water really quickly. Like you're gonna have lines everywhere or, you know, the food court's a mile away from your hotel room or, you know, you gotta find pop machines and pop machines are really expensive. If you can get to a, a store fairly quickly, get that water, get those snacks in your room, it's gonna util it's gonna really enhance your time there, especially if you just want a quick snack or something to hold you over before you're heading out for that awesome buffet at the Bellagio or the Wynn or something like that, you know? You, you don't necessarily wanna go down and spend 30 to $50 on at a little burger joint just to get you by till you know your your main meal and that's gonna play into tip number four which is make it a priority to hit one of the major buffets now I personally like the win and the Bellagio me and my wife prefer the win breakfast buffet we think that's the best we've ever had in our lives and the Bellagio dinner buffet now there are obviously a ton of properties with amazing buffets but out of all the ones that we've gone to those are our two favorites and if you have a favorite please let me know in the comments below I'd love to hear from you and so now, unfortunately, at number five, we got to get into a couple of warnings. One is uh, the resort fees. If you're not familiar with going to uh, Vegas at all, expect a potential resort fee at some of these huge properties that have pools and stuff. And that's just going to be an additional fee that doesn't show up in your price of your package that when you get there at the desk, they're going to ask for money, whether it's 30, 40. I think the highest I've seen is $44 a night. So you may get tacked, it may get tacked on an extra $200 right out front at the desk when you go to check in. So be prepared. Uh, you can you can find out if they have one or not, but a lot of times people don't know that that's coming. They get there and it's like, boom, slap in the face, $200 right up front on top of your booking fee. So be prepared for a potential resort fee. And at number six, another beware, uh, beware of street performers. Now these people are out there making a living, I get it, and they're doing a service, they're making it more enjoyable and stuff, but before you agree or, or take any pictures with anybody or you know hold any snakes or whatever crazy stuff they're doing, check on the prices they want beforehand. A perfect example, uh, me and my wife went, we got, my, we're walking by, I have a nice camera, these two ladies came up dressed up in the this outfit right here and uh they said hey we want a picture sure snap the picture 
Next thing I know, they're asking us for $40, 20 a piece. We didn't want to cause any problems. I know we probably got scammed a little bit, but you know, they're trying to make a living. I get it. Uh, just beware, uh, get the terms before you do anything and they're everywhere now. So, and, and it does enhance. It is fun to see all this stuff going on, but you know, they're out there to make money and they know that if you're in Vegas, you have money. So just be prepared. Okay, so tip number seven, and this is big for me personally, is get up early and hit the strip when nobody's there. Especially if you like to take pictures like I do and you don't want a ton of people around you. Between sunrise and probably 10 a.m., you've got the whole strip basically to yourself and with a couple of other early risers before it gets jam packed with people. And before you say, oh my gosh, get up a sunrise in Vegas, are you crazy? Well, think about this. If you're from the Midwest or East Coast, you're on a three hour time difference there. So 6 a.m. there is 9 a.m. here. So your body's already used to that anyways. And it, look, I'm getting old. I, I like quiet and I like to enjoy that before the main rush. So it's the best of both worlds. You get a little, little quiet time for us older folks. Okay, so speaking of us older folks, there's one other tip here that's really important. Tip number eight is that there is a bus that runs up and down the strip all day, and I believe all night. And so let's say you get out and you're at one end of the strip and you want to walk down in every hotel and every casino on the on the strip. And, you know, you get down the other end, you've had buffet, you're exhausted. Don't worry, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg for a taxi. There's a bus that runs up and down the strip. You can go to the bus, they have stops all over. You know, you'll find these little kiosks. Get on the bus, it's only a couple of bucks to take it all the way down the strip. Or you can pay like 15 bucks a person for an all day bus pass. So if you're worried about walking and maybe your feet hurt or you're getting really tired, don't worry, there is a bus. Check out the bus schedule, check out the kiosk, get yourself a bus pass. It'll drastically improve your time there especially if you have any ailments with your feet or anything like that tip number nine is check into the players club cards especially at the hotels or casinos you're going to be gambling at the most because a lot of them offer a lot of great perks and they change constantly so you're going to want to check and see what's going on sometimes they offer free spins for free play sometimes they have like a special buffet comps room comps it's definitely worth checking out a lot of people just avoid them altogether but it is a great way to get some free things and to enhance your stay there. But you have to you have to take the time to actually go to the kiosk, sign up if you have, and, and go through the process. And then you just enter the card in the machines or whatever you do it throughout the day. And you accumulate points and then you get free things. It's definitely worth trying. And you get on their email and then you'll notice throughout the year you'll get random emails from these places and it gets you excited to go back to Vegas. I think that's really why they do it, but they do give you some free stuff and sometimes it's pretty cool. So definitely check out the Players Club cards at the different casinos that you're going to. So tip number 10 is enjoy the free shows. Look, there's free shows everywhere. These casinos put on these huge elaborate shows because they're hoping they can bring people in for the free shows. You're gonna stay, you're gonna gamble, you might eat there. It's a way to drum up a lot of business, bring a lot of money, it works. And these shows are very elaborate. Some of them are extremely elaborate. You think, wow, this is free? Yes, it's free. Take your time, slow down your spending, relax, enjoy these shows. They're great. So a couple great shows, you've got the Bellagio Water, show obviously circus circus has one uh, fremont street experience they that's really cool uh, the win has the lake of dreams caesar's has the fall of atlanta so there's shows all over the place you just got to do a little research the one thing about vegas is that these show times and arrangements change all the time they're always trying to improve and add new things so it's good to just double check and make sure these shows are still going on or what times they're running but other than that sit back relax enjoy these shows slow down that spending because trust me, you're going to spend enough money there. It's nice to have these free options. So that's it, folks. That'll do it for this list. Hopefully this was helpful for anybody getting ready to go or at least give you a nice foundation. And look, this is our experience. Everybody's is going to be different. Everybody else, their tips might be different too for people who go. But this is just our personal experience, so we thought we'd share. And if you have anything you want to add, please leave it in the description below. But that's it, folks. Thanks for watching and uh, have a fantastic day.